But now on to the bigger and more important point that I think shouldn't go without addressing. All right, let's see it. In about 405 BC, a man named Euripides published a book called The Bacchae, which was performed live at the theater of Dionysus over and over again. Now, not only does the Bacchae have many different themes and motifs that relate to Jesus Christ's character himself as a character named Dionysus, but it also has a very particular story that you happen to just bring up. You see, in the Bacchae story, there's a man named Pentheus who's persecuting the followers of Dionysus, who is the archetype or motif that's very similar to Jesus Christ. Pentheus would be like Paul in the Bible in this situation. So the half-human, half-god named Dionysus was running around trying to make followers and convert them, and many of them practiced a water-to-wine ritual to celebrate and worship Dionysus' life. So I've never seen anyone identify a text that predates the Gospel of John that has a water-to-wine ritual associated with Dionysus. The closest I've seen is a story about Dionysus replacing the water of a stream with wine so that a nymph that comes there to drink would become intoxicated and be easier to seduce. Uh, what we do see in literature written in the second century and after, so after the composition of the book of John, are some accounts of festivals and rituals where people will put empty pitchers in a temple and the next day they'll be filled with wine, or where clusters of grapes go through the fermentation process and magically become wine within a single day. Or there's also a story about a spring in a temple where the water tastes like wine until it's brought outside the temple and then it just tastes like water again. So these are kind of close to what we get in the story of the wedding at Cana. And it's certainly plausible that that story in the Gospel of John about the wedding of Cana is Jesus kind of challenging Dionysus's uh, purview over wine. But the fact that that is a single story within the latest and the most mythologically expansive gospel, I think makes it rather difficult to suggest that this is anything other than kind of a rhetorical flourish. I think it certainly doesn't support the notion that the figure of Jesus is entirely mythological and invented based on these earlier figures, which is frequently argued. I'm not saying that's the argument that this video is making, but uh, for those who would deploy that argument, uh, I, I don't think that's supported by the data. Pentheus absolutely hated Dionysus, and he hated the doctrines, and he went around literally trying to persecute and imprison those who followed Dionysus. Until one day, Pentheus was on the road, out to go find some of the followers of Dionysus so he could persecute them, and he was approached by an angel of light. And guess who that was? The half-man, half-god, demigod figure Dionysus. So this flatly misrepresents the narrative in order to make it sound more like the account in the book of Acts. Uh, Dionysus does not confront Pentheus on any road. Dionysus is captured by a servant and brought to Pentheus to be interrogated. There's also no angel of light. Dionysus is disguised as a human and is being interrogated as a human. And guess what Dionysus' advice was for Pentheus? Dionysus says, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks, since thou art a mortal, and I am a god. So this is another misrepresentation of the narrative where this creator has just taken a quote from the book of Acts and then slapped a little extra on the end to make it sound like it's not the book of Acts. This is absolutely not in the back eye. In the back eye, we have Dionysus, still disguised as a human, warning Pentheus against the dangers of trying to destroy the celebration of the back eye because that will anger the god. Uh, and Pentheus says, don't tell me what to do. You want me to punish you again? And then Dionysus Dionysus says, I would rather sacrifice to the god than kick against his goads in anger, a mortal against a god. And then Pentheus goes on to threaten to kill everybody who's celebrating the Bacchae. So the quote shared by this creator has nothing to do with the actual quote from the Bacchae. And this phrase, kick against the goads, was a saying that's used in a wide variety of different ancient Greek and Latin texts. So this was just a saying that was in common usage. The notion that the story from the book of Acts has stolen it directly from the Bacchae is not supported by the data. Interestingly, these are the exact same words that Paul would use when he wrote about his experience on the road to Damascus, which is literally a copy both in story and in actual writing of the story of Dionysus and Pentheus from the story of Euripides 
400 years before Jesus Christ existed. So that's not Paul's story. That's actually the story as it's recounted in the book of Acts, which was written decades after Paul's death. 